Hey YouTube, I hope you're having an amazing day. And depending when you're watching, happy holidays. While streaming This Is A Ghost, my community asked me to make a video about the basic gameplay and the items in the game, as there are quite a number of them to go through. I won't be covering all the ghost types, the merchant, secret societies in this, but I will cover it in another video. So here's everything you'll need to know about making money, locating, identifying, and banishing your first entity. So remember, if you found this video helpful, please leave a like, consider subscribing, and leaving a little comment. So the first thing I'm going to cover is there are two keyboard layouts with QWERTY and AZERTY. For this video, I will be referring to the keybinds for QWERTY. So your first tool is the journal, default key J. This will have all of the details of what you need to do each round you play, from figuring out the entity's year of birth, their name, their cause of death, their favourite room, the quest you need to complete, crafting ammunition to banish the entity, information on the various entities you have unlocked, and a brief explanation about entity behaviours. Next up is the simplest, most basic tool in your kit, your flashlight. It does exactly what you'd expect and it illuminates an area in a cone in front of you. The default key for this is T, but if you press this key again, this will change to your next tool, the UV light. While the illumination is a lot milder, this is a very useful tool for finding evidence in the form of fingerprints. The known locations for prints by myself so far are on TVs, doors and light switches. If you know of more, feel free to let me know in the comments. Our next tool, and probably my favourite, is the night vision goggles. This has four purposes. One is a great vision tool. Two, the night vision allows you to see the evidence for orbs. Three, you can find the cursed object with this. And lastly, number four, this is used to identify the entity's favourite room. On occasion, while the entity is in the favourite room, it can be identified with the tool by spotting an irregular haze-like distortion. By default, this is on number one key. Next up on the default number two key is the EMF reader. Pretty standard stuff. When the entity moves an object, shows itself, etc., you can get close with the EMF to get an electromagnetic reading. On occasion, if EMF is a collectible evidence, you will get it up to an EMF5 reading. Other thing to note with the EMF is the display screen. You can adjust the range with your scroll wheel between 10 to 25 meters, which is upgradable later. And dots will show up on the screen to give you an indication of where the activity is occurring. Blue dots are new activity, yellow are recent, and white are old. Key number three is your pistol. Not much use to this other than for a quest to shoot the entity with your firearm or to repel the entity if it is hunting you. However, key number four, is your shotgun, a much more useful tool which you can craft special ammunition to banish the entity by adding things like salt, and sage, etc. to the ammo as well as a secondary addition to make the entity weaker. Next we got key number five, the gift given to you by the secret societies, the burning flash. This small pistol, which takes a short time to charge up, then fires a small orb of apparently x-ray and gamma rays? I, I don't know. This weapon is again used for a quest, but also useful in dropping the entity's activity level. Some entities are a lot less vulnerable to this weapon. The LSS, or Laser Spectrum Sensor on Key 6, is a very familiar tool to most, I'm sure. With this tool, you place it on a surface and thousands of green lasers will illuminate the area around it. If this is an evidence for the entity, you'll see a bright green aura of the entity. Key 7 is the Motion Sensor. Once again, very standard item place this on floors or walls and if the entity walks through it you'll get an audible notification and it will light up. Also to note you cannot set this off yourself by walking through it. Next up we have key 8 and likely the one you're going to use the least. This is the talk function. It has a preset list of phrases you can use the mouse wheel to scroll through and then left click to have your player speak them out for you. The only use for this is to complete a quest to antagonize the entity with words. There are four levels of color for the phrases green, yellow, red and purple. Each level will antagonize more than the one before. Next up on key 9 we've got the ghost printer, another tool to be placed on the ground. This will emit a small smoke-like area around the device, which, if the entity can leave footprints as an evidence, will allow them to sharp around the device up to a maximum of a 1.5 metre radius. So if you're playing well and not allowing the entity to rack up too much activity to be able to hunt, then the next item is also somewhat useless. But if you have annoyed it a lot, it can be helpful. Default key K is your shield. This will erect a barrier around you for up to 60 seconds and keep you safe. However, the entity will try to break it down, and if you take even a single step once it is up, you will break it yourself. Next up, the most effective tool for dealing with the entity's activity level is the incense, default key E. If you see the activity is a bit high and are worried about getting hunted, 
place this on the ground or tables, etc., and it will lower the activity. The amount lowered is proximity based to the entity, so far away and it will have no effect. So try to know where it is when you place it. Also worth noting, sprinting raises the activity fast, so consider only doing this if you really need to. Up next, we have the photo camera on default key P. This is the tool for making money. Take photos of objects touched by the entity, touch doors, touch light switches, fingerprints, footprints, touch TVs, the entity itself, and much more. Some photos have a lot more value than others, and with some experimenting, you will find many different things to add to your photo collection. This is another one I will say, let me know in the comments if you have any others. The last tool we have on default key R is the rooms. Once you know what ghost you are dealing with and you have all the information in your journal, you can place a rune on the ground. Once the entity walks into this, they'll be trapped temporarily, giving you a chance to blast away at it with your shotgun. This will take a few goes, but as long as you have the correct crafted ammo, you will eventually banish them. The final thing that I want to talk about is how to identify the year of birth, name, and cause of death of the entity. These are very simple to get. Over time, the entity will write on a wall, which has a very noticeable audio cue. Once you find these, go up to them, right click them, and it will be automatically added to your journal. For the cause of death, there will be some toy blocks somewhere on the map. There is a chance when you walk up to these, an event will trigger, and you can just watch the blocks spell out the cause of death. Speaking of the map, by the way, default M. There's a map. While there are a lot of tools and things to learn in this game, I hope this helps you get started and allows you to banish some ghosties. I will get a video out soon with more details around the secret societies, unlocking the upgrades, more details about the different entities and unlocking new entities. I stream Tuesday to Saturday, 6pm GMT till whatever time I happen to end, and uh, it'd be great to meet you, so come on over, and thanks for watching.